Hey everyone, I know I didn't upload a video last week and that's because I didn't get to finish Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier just yet. But now that I have, I regret to inform everybody that I didn't like this book. I seriously have to switch up that intro, it's really getting old. <laughs> so anyway, as I've said, we're going to be reviewing Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier today. Now background time, Jennifer Hillier is actually an international best-selling novelist. She's currently based in Canada and has written so many books within the thriller genre. Now this book in my hands was published back in 2018 and since then she has gone on to write so many other books within the genre. The story centers around a group of friends, one of which went missing and was eventually found dead at the very beginning of this book. I think to better explain the plot, I'm going to start naming naming names. Angela Wong is the dead friend. Her remains were found within the perimeter of her close friend's home. Said close friend is Regina Shaw, or Gio as she's called throughout the book. Present day, Gio's like this executive of a huge pharmaceutical company. She's a filthy rich fiance and her whole life ahead of her, until Angela's remains are found in the police arrest Georgina in front of the board. So like, as you can imagine, like her whole life falls from there. She's arrested and sent to prison along with her first love and suspected killer, Calvin James. Got that so far? Now here's the third friend. The third friend and the main character also of this book is Kaiser. He, Angela, and Georgina have this like close relationship back when they were in high school. He had like this one-sided crush on Gio since forever and had harbored feelings for her ever since. Now here's the kick. Kaiser's a cop and he's assigned to Gio and Angela's case. Now bear with me guys because this plot is really stressing me out. Now I work in marketing so I'm naturally no expert in the law. But in what world is this even legal? The guy knew them from high school and he was even their, their close friend. So how does he get assigned to a case that he clearly has a deep and emotional connection to? Won't that like jeopardize like court proceeding? I didn't earn my honorary law degree from Law & Order episodes for nothing guys. Olivia Benson, did I make you proud? So I think you guys can tell from this initial reaction where this review is going. Straight off the bat, I was like, nope, this doesn't make sense. Time to bring my hopes down. And you know, I don't want to diss books, okay? I know writers spend so much time making these stories and they pour their hearts into crafting work for us. So it just pains me to leave a bad review. But I would say this is probably the least enjoyable book I've ever read in my lifetime. Okay, that's probably exaggerating. I've obviously read worse. And it's not just because of like the whole Kaiser storyline. I think the whole book had issues, everything of which I'll just highlight one by one. Let's talk about the writing first. I think I had a huge issue with the writing of this book. There were so many grammar and punctuation issues in this book. It was so distracting. And it looks to be published by a fairly large publishing company based in New York. So I don't know what the issue was. Like, were there no editors in the room that day? I think the overall tone of the writing was not that good either. I felt it was like this B-rated thriller movie. And I hate to use this word, but it just felt a bit amateurish, like a badly written fan fiction. There's even like this line that went like, um, that's what liars do, they lie. Like, go figure, of course liars lie, they lied, that's why they're called liars. And the book was written very immaturely. Like for example, I just felt like the descriptions were way out there. When she describes like an assault scene for example, Hillier just explicitly describes every single detail from their private parts to their body positions, whatever. I just thought it was so unnecessarily vulgar. Girl, I'm sweating. I have a lot of emotions that I'm sweating. <laughs> now, I don't mean to sound prude. I love it when authors take risks, but I just don't think it's necessary for you to be that vulgar when describing something as awful as assault. And even like in scenes where like the lovemaking is mutual, I just can't help but cringe over the way Hillier just writes them. One good thing about the writing though is that even when it shifts from one timeline to another, it never really gets distracting so I think plus points to Hillier for that. 
Okay, let's go back to the crazy plot line. Now, I'm going to warn you that this is absolutely going to be spoiler filled because I cannot get to the ridiculousness of this plot without telling you what happens. Now, if you think that the whole plot about a police being assigned to an active case that he's personally connected to is absolutely wild, wait till you get to the part in the book where Calvin, yes, serial killer Calvin, escapes from maximum prison. Now, I know there are cracks in the system, but please, this guy was in maximum security. How the hell did he escape? Were the people watching him the same people that allowed Kaiser to take the case in the first place? That just doesn't make any sense. Now, Calvin's story, it just doesn't get any better from there. We find out that he's fathered several different children, all of which were connected to the recent killings. And plot twist, of course there's a plot twist, there's like 10 of them in this book. Calvin wasn't the one who committed those murders. It was his and Gio's love child, Dominique, who, by the way, we don't get to meet until the very end of this book. We find out that Gio had to put this boy up for adoption after he was conceived out of a horrible assault that Calvin did to her back in her teens. Now, I don't blame people for wanting to put kids up for adoption, but the fact that Gio says something along the lines that she doesn't want any more deaths makes me believe that this author is pro-life and not pro-choice. I just think it's a weird message to put out there. Okay, so if you manage to keep up with all that, you're probably thinking that this book is pretty wild. A lot of things in this book is actually really wild and they felt like they were just slapped into the story for shock factor. And we also find out towards the end that not only is Dominique a serial killer, but he also is so messed up in the head, he almost assaults his own mother. In my opinion, that was so unnecessary having him as a serial killer was already enough you don't need to add any more details to make him more vile so apparently we also find out during that scene that Gio had more involvement in Angelo Wong's death than we initially thought apparently it was Gio's idea to chop her up into pieces and in case you didn't know by now Gio isn't a good character in fact none of them are Kaiser is a cheat, Angela has no redeeming qualities, and Calvin and Dominic are caricatures of a villain. There are folks that Gio meets during her time in prison as well, but they don't really do anything to improve her character or anyone else in this book. They were just unnecessary additions to the plot and did nothing to make it move. And those prison scenes just made me so confused over the overall tone of this book. I don't know if it wanted to be a high school thriller or Orange is the New Black. There were just so many nonsensical things that were going on. Okay guys, rant over. I'm giving this book 1 out of 5 stars, my lowest rating of this year. I am wondering if any of Jennifer Hillier's books are actually better because I really do want to try again with this author. Maybe this is just a bad book. At least these are just all my opinion, of course. You're free to check out the book and let me know if you loved it. I'd love to hear from your perspective. For me, I just didn't like it at all. If you have any other book recommendations, please let me know. And if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I know this is a negative review, but of course, like we all have different opinions on books, no matter if they're popular or like an indie author or whatever. Um, hopefully you guys respect mine. I'll be finishing up the Encyclopedia of Fairy soon, and then that would wrap up my May reading list. I hope to add another book to the roster because I do have a goal of finishing 24 books within the year. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on my next video. Bye!